The Secret of Unexpected Good Fortune and Misfortune There is a saying in the scriptures that the factors responsible for mental, physical agonies and natural disasters, Daivik, Daihik, Bhautik, Dukha, are self-generated. We often come across phenomena which appear quite contradictory to the known laws of nature, creating doubts about the impartiality of divine justice. For instance, an honest, duty-conscious, morally superior person is suddenly struck with a great misfortune in life, as though he or she was being punished by God for a great sin. On the other hand, we find persons engaged in worse type of corrupt practices living in peace and prosperity. An idler wins a jackpot or inherits a fortune from unexpected quarters, whereas a hard-working, intelligent person is found suffering endlessly for want of basic necessities. One person achieves great success with little effort, whereas another does not succeed in spite of his best efforts. Such phenomena are popularly ascribed to the role of the fate, prarabdha. Bhagya, etc. Similarly, unprecedented natural calamities like famine, epidemics, tornadoes, deluge, and damage by lightning and earthquake, and untimely death are commonly attributed to the will of God and known as predestination. Bhagya. Such unexpected happenings as financial loss, accidents, sudden mental physical disability, and physical separation from a dear one are also attributed to fate. Such unexpected adversities are rare, but they do occur in life. At times, they leave such deep imprints on the psyche that it is not possible to ignore them. Those who are not familiar with the mysteries of divine justice become very much perplexed by such phenomena and form opinions which are extremely dangerous for life. Many become resentful towards God blame and abuse him for an unjust injustice. A few even become atheists, considering the futility of worshipping God who does not respond to prayers in distress, despite their prolonged adherences to religiosity. Then there is a class of devotees who serve the saints and worship deities in expectation of some material gains. However, if they are visited with some unfavorable phenomena, coincidentally, their adoration changes to contempt or disbelief. There are quite a few believers in this world who correlate people, places and things with good and bad luck. Such superstitions have caused extreme miseries to innocent persons. The root cause for such irrational behavior is the belief that whatever come to pass is predestined by God and the beings created by Him have absolutely no role in shaping their own destiny. Quite a few persons in this world forsake their responsibility in the mistaken belief that the gain and loss being predestined, there is no necessity of personal effort. They mistakenly believe that they cannot change the will of God who is supposed to have programmed their life beforehand. We often hear expression like whatever is destined cannot be changed or who can change the fate predestined by God or it was the will of God. As a matter of fact, man uses such expressions when he finds himself helpless, disturbed and confused while undergoing adversity. In the absence of an understandable cause, the agitated mind finds a scapegoat in the divine will. Nevertheless, such outbursts do have an advantage. They help in releasing the stress of the disturbed mind, which would have otherwise done incalculable harm to the person concerned. There are, however, many mature persons who shirk their responsibility of self-effort to meet a given challenge under the pretext of inexorability of divine will. Because of their influence, the less knowledgeable younger persons around them too begin to feel helpless and despaired because of the so-called inevitability of fate. 
readers would appreciate how ignorance of the real causes of unexpected calamities creates ridiculous concepts which distort and vitiate the value system of life. Since time immemorial, man has been attempting to correlate human activities with events of life over which he has no control. Research in deeper spirituality has discovered ways and means to find answers to such problems in life. In the following section, we shall discuss how mental and physical actions of individual and collective activities of the society become responsible for good fortune and misfortune of individuals and the community. The three types of agonies and their causes. Certain happenings of good fortune and misfortune are part of life and there is no escape from them. Saint poet Surdas has rightly stated that the effects of actions, karmas, cannot be avoided even with the best of guidance from an enlightened and experienced person. In spite of having Maharishi Vashisht as his guru, Sri Ram had to undergo the agony of the death of his father, abduction of his wife Sita, and subsequently her forced banishment to Rishi Valmiki's ashram. It would not be proper to assume that misfortunes are punishments given by an angry god to chastise an erring person. The epic Ramayana says that each individual is himself personally responsible for his happiness and miseries. Kahu na ko dukha sukhar data nij nij karm bhog sab bhrata all beings reap the fruits of their own karmas. They rejoice or wail, weep and suffer because of their own doings. With each living being, God has provided an unerring and intelligent mechanism which determines fruits of his actions. Like a fish swimming in the water or a snake moving on sand, we leave behind footprints of our own karmas. These impressions are known as samskars in spiritual parlance. Evil deeds generate distressful samskars which in course of time sprout as sufferings like self-growing thorny bushes. Now we shall discuss the three categories of karmas, their characteristics and consequences. Happiness and peace is the natural state of mind. Man is instinctively inclined to act for welfare of self and others, which naturally results in peace and joy. He suffers only when he is mentally disturbed. He dreads mental turbulence, sorrow and grief. Hence, it would be useful to discuss about the causes of unhappiness. As the medical science has two independent streams, one for promotion of health and another for treatment of diseases, there are two branches of spiritual effects, one for promoting happiness and the other for unhappiness. Righteous living is essential for inner peace and happiness just as nutritional food is for health. In therapy, it is necessary to first have a diagnosis and then look for treatment. The same holds true for unhappiness. By discarding the karmas which produce bad samskars, we can get rid of the resultant suffering and pain. Let us now discuss the three types of sufferings in detail. As mentioned earlier, misfortunes influence a person by creating three types of adverse reactions – mental suffering, physical pain, and distress caused by natural disasters. In spiritual parlance, these are known as daivik, daihik, and bhautik dukhas – mental sufferings, daivik dukhas. All types of sorrows, mental suffering, are results of mental sins. Worry, anxiety, anger, humiliation, animosity, separation from a beloved one, fear, grief, etc. are signs of divine justice for mental sins. 
mental sins are those willful karmas deliberate acts of mind which are carried out under the influence of strong negative emotional stimuli we may call mental sins as corrupt functions of mind like jealousy perfidy deception annoyance cruelty etc which pollute the environment around the inner psyche mental sins do not provide any physical gratification like a smoke filled room an environment created by pollutants of mind suffocates the soul the soul being a portion of the omnipresent divinity is intrinsically pure it does not permit accumulation of sinful thoughts around itself and is always eager to push out of pollutants in some way or the other in the same manner as the body expels the harmful food the soul is meticulously careful about its purity the moment it finds the mental sense polluting its environment it feels uncomfortable and immediately reacts to discard the pollutants though our external conscious mind is hardly aware the inner subtle mind is always seeking the opportunities to throw off this burden sometime somehow from somewhere it involves man in situations which neutralize the samskars created by mental sins through such reactions as humiliation failure disrepute etc death of a beloved person loss in business and property public defamation poverty etc are also mental agonies such situations bring out the inner pain to the surface and the aggrieved person weeps wails and is reminded of the futility of worldly attachments and impermanency of material things situations creating acute unhappiness bring out a greater awareness of the need for righteous living man is motivated to refrain from committing sinful deeds in future and follow an upright path in life while attending funerals people are reminded of the urgency of living a purposeful life when suffering from financial loss man seeks god's help on being defeated and becoming unsuccessful vanity is deflated when the intoxication is over the drunk begins to talk sense the only purpose of mental distress is to cleanse the mind of garbage of mental pollutants such as jealousy ingratitude selfishness cruelty heartlessness cunning hypocrisy and egoism through suffering the intelligent divine mechanism ensures removal of some scars created by prarabdh karmas which will be discussed later pain and anguish spring forth to wash out the deleterious samskars generated by prarabdh karmas apparently sins like theft burglary robbery adultery kidnapping and violence are committed physically but since these are basically outer manifestation of mental stimuli such acts fall in the category of mental sins physical sufferings dahik dukhas the cause of congenital deficiencies and genetic diseases is misutilization of the corresponding organs in the previous life cycles after death the soul discards the physical body but carries forward the astral body sukshma sharir to the next life in the succeeding birth the new body is shaped by this astral body the astral body carries with it nuclei seeds of some scars of earlier physical existence to the next reincarnation the corresponding components of physical organs which are immorally used in the previous life lose their vitality in the astral body but manifest as malfunctioning of those organs in the physical body of the next birth thus it is possible for a sexually indulgent person to be born with congenital impotence or with imperfections in sexual organs in the next life giving exemplary punishment for over indulgence in this manner the divine justice also provides the being 
an excellent opportunity for self upliftment the temporary period of non function or malfunctions of the affected faculty serves the purpose of caution as well as rejuvenation for the next life that is to say whichever organ of the body is recklessly misused for sense gratification is deemed to be engaged in a physical sin in the next life that organ is either found missing or appears as a congenital defect thus congenital physical deformities or diseases are for remission of sins the compulsive rest rejuvenates the organ of the body and also relieves the burden of sin from the mind through repentance when a mental sin is intermixed with a physical sin and it has not been neutralized in the present life by punishment by the state society or by atonement it is also carried over to the next life however if the sin is basically physical with little or no input of mental sin deliberate intention the biological system immediately takes care of it for instance man gets intoxicated and deranged on taking drugs falls sick because of dietary irregularities or dies on consuming the poison this is a physical punishment for a physical sin the body cleans itself of the small physical sins speedily and these are neutralized in this very life on the other hand as mentioned earlier serious physical vices which are also associated with mental stimuli are carried over by the astral body for being worked out in the next life suffering resulting from natural calamities bhautik dukhas of late science has begun to appreciate the impact of lopsided human activities on pervasive global life sustaining elements of nature indiscriminate use of chlorofluorocarbons by some developing countries is damaging the global atmosphere for entire human kind by producing the greenhouse effect reckless deforestation in certain parts of the world is creating worldwide ecological imbalances such examples illustrate that basic elements of nature are globally interdependent and local changes in them have universal implications the following observations bring out this eternal truth pran the universal life force is one of the vital elements of nature which is an integral constituent of all animate beings the entire human race is interconnected with this all pervasive element each spark of life in the individual animate being which is known as atma in spiritual parlance is part of the omnipresence of that universal life force the science of spirituality maintains that karmas and sanskars of all living beings are mutually interactive in social milieu these reactions are quite prominent a criminal brings shame to his parents and family as well the later to suffer disgrace since disregarding their responsibilities by not performing the right karmas they did not exert enough influence to make the person a good citizen the responsibility for spiritual development of the child a virtuous karma lies with the parents and other adults of the family hence though in the material world only the offender receives the punishment from the law enforcers and the society the souls of the parents and other family members do have to suffer partially for this dereliction of duty which the divine jurisprudence considers as a sin when the neighbor's house is on fire you cannot remain a silent spectator since soon you may also become a victim if in spite of being capable of preventing one looks on at acts of theft burglary rape murder etc indifferently the society would look down upon such a person contemptuously and the law would also not spare him the laws of divine justice to follow a similar norm divine law expects man to abide by time tested moral codes of conduct and also make maximum possible endeavor to prevent others from violating them 
if some country or community or race does not make an effort to prevent or dissuade others from committing wrong deeds in spite of being in a position to do so or does not promote morality and ethics despite having the means to do so the former too has to suffer its consequences such collective sense of inactivity or indifference invite combined punishment from divine justice earthquakes deluge drought famine world wars are consequences of collective sense of humanity in which karmas for vested interests were given priority and welfare of the rest of humanity was ignored examples are spread of aids drug abuse and alcoholism disintegration of families juvenile delinquency terrorism environmental pollution etc the developed countries are suffering consequences of their smug indifference towards the welfare of the underprivileged masses elsewhere